Okay, so we're going to whiz through and see what we've been up to this year. Uh, the first event we had was quite a sort of sad one, really, um, because uh, Nat finally decided that three jobs was one job too many for a normal human being, uh, as you probably should have realised many years ago. Um, I normally uh, put silly pictures of Nat up because she's spent years doing silly pictures of me, but I'm not going to today um, because uh, I've got... Um, I hope you're, you're aware that you know, Gus and Nat set up TVP. And while, of course, it may have seemed effortless, or some, some of the time anyway, there was a hell of a lot of furious paddling behind the scenes. And the reason we have paddled thus far is very much down to Nat. Um, so I think we should all, uh, I'd like you to join me in uh, uh, saying thank you to Nat. <laughs> Cool. Um, okay, what else have we been doing? Uh, we've done a whole series of lectures and workshops, over 25 of them. Uh, hopefully some of you have been, I know some of you have been. Uh, hopefully we'll be we will be carrying it on next year. Please do come along. Um, and we've also done 45 guided walks, including uh, a series for Totally Thames. We've done a walk for Lamas, we've done stuff for UCL. We've also done stuff recently for Bader International Uni uh, University and also London Culture Seekers. And we've had about 600 people come on walks this year. Um, when recently we also did uh, two events, one with Tideway at Putney and Shadwell, and also uh, at Fulham Palace. Some of you came and kindly helped out with that one. All very successful stuff, and really doing some good outreach work with the general public, getting them down on the foreshore and seeing what it's all about. But what have we been doing down on the foreshore? Uh, we started off at Rotherhithe, uh, where we had this year's uh, frog training. I think there's a few of the, this year's cohort here. Excellent. Good to see you. Um, and in terms of the archaeology down there, uh, we were picking up a load of strange mooring features. Reused vests for timbers like this. Uh, also, uh, other bits. This is probably part of a, uh, a knee off a ship. Uh, cut up, maybe. Uh, and some bits as yet unidentified. We need to do more work there. But uh, we also picked up a very strange rudder. This is a, a rudder we picked up uh, a couple of years ago, but next to it, just right, we saw a very new one this year. And this is really unusual. This is a structure we think from the 1820s. So it's a Napoleonic era, vessels that have been broken up. Most of them have copper nails on them for copper sheathing, which is what you'd expect of this period. This one, however, here, you can see it's got wooden sheathing, which is not what you'd expect of a northern European warship of this time. Um, what we do know from documentary evidence is that one Turkish and one Algerian ship were broken up in rather high at this period. And I've got a feeling that might be one of those. So again, um, we need to do more research on that, but it's a very curious thing. It's not like anything else of any of those assemblages we get in rather high or Bermondsey of this period. Um, on St. Cannon Street, where we were looking at the uh, Swan Lane end of things this year, and you can see just how much this has eroded here. Um, so we spent a lot of time waiting for the tide to go out of this enormous scour that we have here. But what it did do is allowed us to look at this structure which has recently come up. A cruciform structure. Um, clearly something comes off it, uh, sitting upright. You can see it again there. We've got another one we've known about for some time, another two actually we've known about for some time upstream. Um, there are also some more at Greenwich. And I know Martin's going to talk about the Greenwich ones, so I'm going to leave you in suspense as to what we think these are. Uh, we also looked at uh, Swan Lane stairs and, and, and the jetty structures there, which we cleaned up and did some planning of. So you can see here there's some earlier oak piles and some later uh, Victorian or possibly later uh, uh, softwood piles. So one of the things we want to try and do is start to untangle this uh, sort of palimpsest of piles and try and work out in some sort of phasing there. But hold, hold on to that picture in your head, we'll come back to this. Uh, we then did monitoring up at Putney, uh, moved on to Oserworth, where we've got a nice Saxon fish trap, uh, at Chiswick, and also at Fulham. Uh, for those of you who haven't been to Fulham, there's a very nice bit of Saxon archaeology. There's a, a sixth century Saxon timber there, which we don't know what it's part of, we're hoping more will come out and a 10th century wattle hurdle, probably from a fish trap there. Uh, we then went on to Brentford for monitoring, 
And Brentford's going to be an interesting one, actually. We're over here, it's basically a boat graveyard, and we're working on things in the past. We've worked on things like this, which looks like a big load of rubbish, but is actually an ex uh, Royal Naval pinnace um, off a battleship or a cruise or something like that. But Brentford is a squatted mooring, or it was, and recently the council have been moving off all the boats to turn it into uh, an expensive luxury mooring. So when they move off the boats, um, I wonder how much of our archaeology they're going to move as well. So uh, next year is going to be interesting. I think we'll have to go back to Brentford and have a good look next year and see what's left. Um, who knows? We then went to Strand on the Green, uh, where we've got some very nice uh, bits of river wall, including this bit which has reused Tudor brickwork in it. Um, and then we did a week of field work at Tripcock Ness, uh, where we went and re-recorded some of these crazy ballast lighters, which were built by the Royal Arsenal uh, in the late 19th century. Uh, they were absolutely useless because they weren't built by boat builders, they were built by uh, yard, uh, sort of uh, wagon builders. And so they fell apart, all of them were in halves. Um, but as this one in particular has been falling apart, we've been able to see um, and see more of it. So we did a bit more work on that. Glorious week of uh, field work that was for the weather. I think you'll remember if you, those of you who came. Um, and then we finished up at Greenwich. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about Greenwich because Martin is, but that's Greenwich. And we found one of those a couple of years ago, another one of these cruise form things. Um, this one has got some nice tool marks on it. And also some very strange, I don't know if you can see, I can't even see, maybe I'm too close, some very strange little inscriptions there. I don't know if they're tool marks or potentially even, even excitingly witch marks. We may have a witch mark type expert in the building who might want to have a look at those. And here's another one of these strange cruciform things which has been slowly showing up the last year or so. Um, we're getting more and more of these. Um, but uh, I've seen Marty's presentation, so I know he'll talk about them, however briefly. Other things we've been doing, uh, we've been very, very fortunate at MOLA this year in that uh, Professor Pablo Rodrigo Navarez um, from the University of Valencia has been on a sabbatical with us, and he's an expert in 3D modelling and photogrammetry. So uh, he uh, came and did some uh, 3D modelling of the foreshore. This is the Swan Lane stairs, and... And it's amazing that you can get these crazy views. Um, I, I can't do 3D modelling in a PowerPoint, unfortunately. I'm so technically backward. But anyway, um, we'll have those on the website that you can have a look at and play with. Uh, we also did this vessel, uh, Galleons Point, which is probably a late 19th century, early 20th century coastal trader. It's something we've been keeping an eye on um, for a number of years now. But the problem we have with this is the access is really, really poor. It's not... We can't really take a whole team down. But what we have done is managed to 3D model that as well. And then finally, we also uh, we had a small frog team over to Isleworth 8 uh, to clean up Eothan, uh, which is our uh, World War I subchaser, the last one we think surviving at 550, which uh, was then a Dunkirk little ship. Um, and we modelled that with the help of uh, Pablo's colleague, Giorgio Verdani, Verdiani from the University of Florence. And that is really a really nice model. So again, that should be available on the website. And um, this actually going, taking us into next year in the future, uh, because this ship uh, is, this little ship is so um, significant, we are in discussion with the uh, National Museum of the Royal Navy and Coastal Forces Heritage Trust. And we're putting together a bid to do a joint MOLA professional TDP volunteer excavation of this vessel next year. So it'll be a, a, a team of professionals and amateurs working together to excavate and record what we can uh, of the ocean. And then whatever we can take for conservation, uh, most of the ship is just too far gone. Most of the boat is too far gone to conserve. But what we can take for conservation, uh, the National Museum of the Royal Navy are going to take and hopefully put together an exhibition and display of this. So we'll keep you informed of progress on that. Hopefully it'll happen. It'll be a really, really good project. And as I say, this is the last of 550 of these. No, no detailed plans exist for these things either. They were bought in by the Navy uh, from America. And to be, so we don't actually even know the details of these things. So it's a really significant crowd. Um, and for those of you who uh, aren't TDP members and want to learn more about the archaeology of Forshaw, 
There's a book, I might not have mentioned it, on sale out there. Please have a look. Uh, £10 to you this weekend. Um, next year, um, the first thing I need to mention is we've got a new staff member starting, Will Rathouse, at the end of this month, who comes from a background with archaeology, using archaeology um, and, in, uh, and helping people, uh, people's mental well-being. So he's going to be a really good um, asset to the team. And um, uh, I'm sure you'll all get to meet Will very, very soon. We will be taking him down on the foreshore, I think probably in his first day, something like that. Get him used to the mud. Uh, and we'll be going out, doing the usual things, field work, guided walks, all the usual stuff. But we're going to visit a couple of new sites, uh, one of which is going to be this one at Trinity Boy Wharf, which we went down and had a bit of a, a recce earlier this year. It's a really interesting site. It's right by the Blackwall shipyard, so there's quite a bit of um, shipbuilding stuff down there, dock entrances, all sorts of things, uh, causeways. Um, and it's a really nice little site, and there's a great calf at the top of it as well. So everyone's a winner. Um, oh yeah, it's also quite clearly in the past it's been very perilous side. Uh, a child's boot stuck there. So be careful when we go to Trinity Boy Wharf. Hold on to your wellies. Okay, I think that's the end of me. So, 